One thing I really enjoy uh, making that I never thought I would is the occasional outdoor piece of furniture. Uh, the vast majority of the things I've made have all been interior, you know, fine woods and trying to put a nice finish on it and all that. But um, I think the first real piece was when I designed one, a hanging swing for the old Rough Cut show and I, as a guest on there. And we, uh, I made it out of white oak and... It turned out so nice. I mean, we, hang it, we hung it in our backyard. It was on the photo on Instagram, if you're following us at Tom McLaughlin 10 on Instagram. And uh, it, is, it has been a real pleasure to have it out there. It's actually out behind the shop, hanging between two great old trees. And it's, it ha has this um, like canopy of of trees and leaves over the top of it. So it's just a real special place to get up under and relax on a nice hot summer day. So that's what I want to talk about tonight is transforming a design or see if we can make this work as a stand on the ground type bench where right now it's designed to just suspend in air with no legs. So I'll show you my process for uh, designing something that first and foremost, is comfortable, and then working out the lines and shapes of the various pieces. Now, one of the pieces that you may have seen is this Adirondack chair. If, if you get Fine Woodworking Magazine, not this exact chair, but one like it, was on the cover. And it's crazy. You know, I had never built an Adirondack chair, and... I was just going around to different chairs that I saw in the neighborhood. And there's one um, house down the road. I knew nobody was there. And they had these right out in front of the yard. And I just went over and I took a few quick measurements to see how, how low these things really are and what the parameters were in general. And I measured quite a few chairs that I found. Some of them were out behind Shaker Village. And I made notes of the different dimensions. And I thought I'd use that as a basis for my design, but I wanted to add uh, curved lines to it to make it super comfortable. So for this Adirondack, you have that nice le lower lumbar curve, and then it also curves this way, which seems to almost hug your back around the sides. And then you have that sweeping profile of the seat. But I did the drawing using dimensions that I thought might work, but I wanted to know that it was comfortable. So before I went from the scale drawing and really committed to the full-size drawing, I made a mock-up of that shape. And by a mock-up, I mean, I mean this. I mean, look how simple that is. I, I drew the curved back profile on a piece of three-quarter inch plywood, and I paired those up. And then just screwed some bending ply to that so it would take on the curve and mimic the curve I wanted on my final chair. And then I also took the curve that I had drawn out for the seat and got that. Now the last thing I had to do was orient it in space, like how high off the ground and what kind of recline would I want. So I used some of those key measurements and it was interesting. Would you believe that the front of most Adirondacks that I measured is four inches higher than this low point in the back? So they really are pitched back. They scoop you up and when you sit in an Adirondack you feel, you feel that. You feel really comfortable. Because it's pitched like that your butt and your lower back really hits against here. So you really sit into those seats like a recliner. You know, it's basically the outdoor recliner. So I made this and then I screwed these little pieces just at, to get the heights to where I felt it would work. And let's just see what it was. It was, I knew, okay, yeah, I remember now, 10 inches high to that. And then in the front, it's 14. So. That was what I was working with. And once I just screwed those on, just some on the bo both sides. And then I even screwed on an armrest to see how that would feel. 
And then I gave it a try. Man, I hope this holds me. <laughs> but I sat in it and I was like, oh, that's nice. You know, you wanted to push your head back, but there was nothing. So right away I knew I wanted those back slats high enough to hit my head. But I, I really liked how it scooped me up like that. And it felt great. So I was like, once I got the angle, I think I tweaked it a little bit. And then I put this arm on here and I got that height to feel about how high I wanted it. And it was during this time that I had my arm here and I was leaning it. And it, it just feels a little high here. So the typical Adirondack, the arms are almost level with the ground. So you're sitting low, but those arms, you know how it is, they go straight in a plane like that. So you're sitting in them like this. So I thought, I'm going to add this little rec recline and make this interesting little joint here where we could have it actually drops 12 degrees here. And this angle would then become not only a comfortable thing, but it's a nice design element because it relates to that sweeping curve. This is the big key visual of this contemporary Adirondack. So by making that thicker rail, I was able to house that curved line of the slats so that it would be, have a clean look on the outside, but they're fully inserted into uh, mortises on the sides here. That's a great chair to build. It's, it's challenging. You know, there's some things about it that are challenging. Everything's not screwed together. In fact, the only screws are just tacking these in place on the back. And then I plug them. But this whole arm assembly, there's no screws involved. There's mortise and tenon here. There's a spline joint across here. There's a big um, bridle joint in the back corner. Super strong. So there's a lot of integrity to the construction. But then when I built that and I sat in it, Finally, wow, was that rewarding. But it's the identical feeling to our mock-up. And I could put my head back, and it was so restful. But look, my head hits, and it's got a little spring to it. This is a great project, too, if you want to tackle. But I think you were earlier in your woodworking career, I would tackle the hanging swing, or maybe even this modification that we're going to figure out right now for the bench. Here's our, this is the, the swing, so you can see from the profile, it's got a very similar kind of lower lumbar support. I may have even used almost the same curvature. So that feels really good against your back. And then this curve in the seat is nicely swooped and scooped out and dished. And I actually, in, I chose to put narrower slats here so they would form that curvature better than using wider planks on there where you would just feel the flatness of them. So this also has no screws except for those that secure these slats onto the, onto the rails, the seat rails here. And we used stainless steel screws and left them exposed. So you'll get no rust there, but all of the glue and all of the mortise and tenons, which consist of the entire rest of the joinery, are all glued together with waterproof glue and then pegged with true white oak pegs that go right through the tenons. So all of that is visible here. So we have, this is the same profile we were just looking at. So this is the profile, this is the arm pattern. The tenon is going through, and then we have the peg location here. This is the lower side rail. And you can use this, this I said, is the pattern actually, that curved line. And I actually made a long form video of building this. And I know some of you have, have built this and sent me some great photos. Uh, this, then these are the slats on top. So. The long form video just takes you through all of the pattern making, the layout, the methods I use for joining it. And you can change it up a little bit. I know some people have used in places lighter weight materials. And I got the question several times, can you substitute the Festool Domino for the true mortise and tenons? And yes, you can. You just have to choose appropriately sized 
dominoes and you probably double them up side by side there instead of just one single you'll have two side by side and approximate the sizes of these mortises as well and you'll get plenty strong I mean that would be a nice strong joint and you could even throw some pegs in there and who would know <laughs> they could actually serve a purpose so this is it I mean this is the front view of it and I drew just half of the front view because it's just a mirror the other side and that's that and then both sides are the same here you just have a right and a left and that's all there is to it so <coughs> you can see that our C comes down and then it's truncated right here where you would have it continue to the floor to be a bench we chopped it off so it's only like a half an inch below the side rail now normally he would do that flush but I was adding material there to give more strength because this thing's hanging in space and you're actually sitting on the seat and the, the stress is down on the the wood here that tenon is resting on that small amount of wood down there so we went with that kind of arrangement but back to our swing turning it into a bench I don't have a mock-up for this and I didn't want to cut all those pieces I mean that's close to it actually that is actually very close our, our first mock-up but rather than change those legs since I have one of the benches right here I'm just gonna mock up using this by clamping some wood pieces to the sides so to do that I'm gonna use these pieces as like temporary leg supports and I'm just gonna clamp them on like the sides like this at a given height okay I'll clamp them right to here and we'll get the height now what about the height well for a bench you're not sitting like a low rider like that Adirondack you're not down like the Memorex commercial on a bench you're you're a little more civilized you want to sit by the garden and it's a nice serene environment I meant to stay tell you about a bench that Pug Moore had um, I don't know why he, he had this nice little yard and it was it was just between the house and the shop and it there's like a canopy of pine trees over it and every year he would like put a white coat of paint on this mahogany bench he had made it was patterned after one I think he saw in Williamsburg so that was it was a very traditional thing to have these outdoor benches but it was built almost like furniture you know it had a really interesting lattice work on the back and I remembered that and that's that's what actually made me think of shaping these arms this way I don't I know I didn't hit it totally but I know his arm was very similar to this it had that kind of sweep down which is what we used to put on the Queen Anne chairs you know a little more exaggerated and they'd of course be rounded but all of this is nicely rounded off so when you sit in this chair and your arm hits it it's super comfortable and it feels like somebody cared about the details so because I did care <laughs> so I, I always like that thought you have that white bench out there and I would like to have a bench outside so we're gonna actually use this I think but I have to build another one because I'm not gonna just add the legs onto here but if we do build the bench how high do we want it well it's gonna be similar to a dining chair so a dining chair the front height of or the seat height is usually around 17 and a half to 18 inches so and then it starts to get a little too high for um, shorter people I don't know vertically challenged people I, I don't know what is the right term let's just say I usually test my chairs I'll sit in it see if it feels good and then Chris the lovely camera lady will try it out and I'm 6'2", and she's 5'2", so that's a pretty good range. If it feels comfortable to both of us, I feel like we have a winner. So here, we've got this front top here. I want to set this to around 16 
um, 16 and a half, say, because I already know that this, if I just build this horizontally to this rail, I know it feels too stiff, too upright. I know I need it to recline. So I'm going to want this to go a little higher, and I'm going to do that with some, some um, props. But look at, see, that? it feels nice, but I got this sound pack here. I can't really sit. Okay. But I, I feel a little stiff, like I want to slouch a little bit, you know, to get at a better angle. It doesn't really want to scoop me totally up if I'm just vertical. One of the things I noticed about hanging the outdoor swing was it was quite a significant pitch that ended up being the most comfortable pitch. It scoops you up, and it feels super comfortable to sit in for a long time with the way this is rounded over. So this has been tried and, tr and tested by the camera lady for how many hours would you sit in this? And your legs, didn't, your legs didn't even get like sore or anything hanging, you know? And we could even put a block there and push yourself, whatever. But as a seat, I just feel like this is too vertical. It just has to recline a little more. Most dining chairs that are really comfortable, the front edge is about an inch higher than the back of the seat. So right now we do have some of that, but I think we're going we're gonna to want to recline this more. So let's get to work here. If I make that 16 and a half, say right around 16 and a half to here, then I want to be, I'll be 12 and a quarter from the bottom of the legs. That's what I want my, my dummy support to be. So I'm going to take this leg, and these are going to be my supports. And I'm just going to tack a little block on them that will index, what did I say, 12 and a quarter? Yeah, that's what I said. And this doesn't have to be too fussy. So let's see, I want the block on this side. So I want a support at 12 and a quarter. I'll do the same here. And the last one. And now I'm going to just take these little blocks. These will help me clamp it more easily. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just go up there. And all we need for this is a nail gun. guys okay now we can go about clamping these on so I'll use the longer ones in the back since we get a little bit of carry and all I'm going to do is sit them right like that so I know I'm 12 and a quarter from the bottom. And I'll just put it pretty vertical. I'm going to clamp it like this. All right, so. Hey, this might be, if I just put some glue on there, We'd be done. <laughs> what a hack job that would be, huh? All right, so let's just put um, this one here. Snug these up. And last one. That's it. 
So if you don't have, you know, if you didn't have the bench ready, what I would do is I would mock up the profile of the seat from the drawing, just like I showed you earlier, just cobbling it together out of cheap materials, but getting very, you know, accurate, just screwing it together, plywood or whatever, at the same shape, <coughs> so you can quickly test it. And once you had that seat shape, then you'd attach legs like I did on that one for the Adirondack. So now we've got that, and we can get it off of the base here. All right, so check it out. It already looks nice, huh? You can just go with that. I mean, that looks pretty nice. But the way it sits, you know, I'm not building, I'm building it for real comfort. And I just feel like my legs are too low in the front. It just feels a little too low. So I want to get this to pitch back a little bit more. So to do that, I'm just going to add some spacer blocks under the front legs and we'll see how it feels. Okay, so I've got a couple pieces of plywood. I've got the three quarter and the quarter. So these, I'm adding an inch to each side. Okay, so let's just put that under there and put that under there. Okay, and check it out again. It's better, it really is better. It's like, your lower back doesn't want to come away from it as much. That feels okay, but I want to try just a scotch more. So let's try this little piece of half inch material. So now we're like an inch and a half pitch here in the seat. And it's definitely reclining more. I hope this holds. Oh yeah. I think this is nice. I really do. I, it's comfortable. I mean, let's just stop right here. <laughs> no, but even if you sat to the side, we'll see how the head bob works with this. Not that good. No, it feels great. It really feels comfortable, and I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and redesign it with this type of angle and um, we'll go with that, okay? So this is definitely for comfort, and it's gonna be a little interesting. We'll see how it works out, because our front leg, all of the joinery is at 90 degrees, and it doesn't really bother me if the front leg is sloping forward, because the back leg is actually, we're gonna add a pretty strong sweep back on the lower side. So that will almost counterbalance and you'll have a little bit of a triangulation appearance from the side view. Um, if that's annoying, you know, you could change the angle and we could make a vertical leg there. But this will have to be angled, that shoulder. The shoulder of the side rail will also have to be angled. So it changes the appearance of it a little bit. But just the way I'm doing it here, that if we don't do any changes here, everything stays 90. We accept the fact that that front leg will be angled forward <coughs> to get this nice comfortable pitch. Then you can use that exact same drawing for the hang for the swing, the hanging swing um, design, and then would just would change that back leg. Okay, so let's get this back leg figured out. So right here we've got 13 and 7 eighths to that front corner and I'll measure to the back corner. I'm 12 and an eighth. So it's 13 and 7 eighths from the front and 12 and an eighth from the back. So what I'm going to do is just recreate those dimensions using this original drawing. This is my side view. On this paper so I'm going to measure from that front corner to up to 13 and 7 eighths. I want to recreate that pitch I have there. So I'll just go holding the, the rule as square as I can. Say right about there. Could I get a grab on that thing? I'll bring it down. That's 14.
Okay, there we are. 13 and 7 eighths. Now the back corner, I want 12 and an eighth. So I'm just going to hold my finger here and just pivot this. As it looks a little exaggerated right there because I went too far. It's still going to look quite different because of that recline. Oops. And let's go right almost. Okay, that's 12 and an eighth. Let's get a piece of tape on there. And double check the front. It's 13 and 7 eighths. Okay, that looks good right there. Okay. So that's that. Now I'm going to come around the front and we'll tape this down like that. Now, what we've done here is I have. I have just recreated the same distance from the bottom of that side leg to the floor in the back and in the front. So now I just want to carry that curve down. Now, I want to sweep this curve out. If I came straight down, it would look like this was reclining too much. By sweeping this back, we'll not only get a little triangulation here, it won't look so rigid, but this will be sweeping a little forward and then this one will come back and it will also make the center of gravity you know right here it'll have a good stable support rather than coming straight down so a lot of traditional 18th century chairs sweep back just like that almost beyond where how far this reclines but I'm not going to quite get that I'm going to get probably about a half inch to it but I won't be all the way so if I'm right here, I'm inch and three-eighths there. So let's go an inch and oh, right down here is the bottom. So I'm inch and three-eighths, and I don't think I'll get that far. I think I'll, if I can get to an inch and seven-eighths, that will be good. All right, so we want that leg to sweep back. So what we're going to do is just take this rule and, and use it to create that leg sweep, something like that, okay? I need my trusty stick, my mouth stick, because my assistant is occupied. And we'll get that in our mouth, and we're gonna sweep it, something like that. Okay, now we've got this nice little sweep, and we can, let's see how this is going to work. I'm going to actually come into that just a little bit. I'll just shoot for close to parallel. Let's see what we get. Mm-hmm. That's good. This looks a little fat to me. I'm going to just try to trim it out a little bit like this. All right, so that's better. There we go. So there's our back and our front. We'll just carry on the line here. Um, this will be our... front leg coming down. You know, we could actually find out the degrees of this recline right here by using this front leg. 
line off of the edge, you know, I'll get some close. <coughs> Let's see what I got here. You know, my trusty protractor. Okay. Let's see what it says. Okay, it's just five degrees, so not a lot. I don't know why it looks like more than that, but it is. It's only five degrees. All right, so check that out. Now we've got, I'm going to stand this up so we can actually see it. So we'll actually see that profile view if we stand this up. So there's our profile for our back leg. Now I think I'm going to refine this a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit thinner than that, just a little chunky. I don't mind it being a little heavier than what's up here for sure, but not a lot heavier than what's going on here. So I'll just tweak that later. But that'll be the profile, and that'll give us that same nice reclined pitch for the ultimate comfortable bench. All right? So now, what do you do when you get to this point? Well, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but what I would do is I want to carry through. I could make the entire drawing here by just poking through at the critical locations. But I really, I really just need the back leg and the front leg. And the front leg measurement, I can actually, I don't need a pattern of this because it's just straight. So I could say, I'm going to go off the 10 here. I could say right from the front corner, wow, to the underneath of the arm is 36 to the shoulder. Okay, so that's 36. And, wow, it almost ends up being right on the half-inch line. So I'm 28 to the top of my front. I'm sorry, 18. Oh, my gosh. See, that's the thing. You got to watch out. That's why I don't measure from the one inch, because you, you, it dawns on you usually faster than it did on me just then. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is 26, not 36. And this is 18, of course, to the seat height right here. Okay, it's 18 here, but notice how it slopes back. Now, this is, this is going to show us, like, the height of that seat right there. We're actually at 17 and 3 quarters to the apex of that height. So that's nice. And then at the low point, look at where it dishes in. We're at 16 and a half. So that's a nice kind of contour down into the seat. And then you have a really nice recline back. <clears throat> so... I really like this. I think this is going to work out and be a super comfortable, enjoyable garden bench for a long time to come. Now, I would make a pattern. I need a new pattern of that back leg. I had this nice pack that I found upstairs in the library. And I've got my arm pattern. This is all just derived right from the print. And I think I made these or... I made some on that long form video to show you exactly how to go about recreating nice, accurate patterns from that side view. And then I've got this side view of the back leg, even cut through for the mortises so that I could easily draw the locations quickly rather than laying it all out by, um, by hand, every one. You could just go ahead and mark it on the inside and you've got it. So, what I want to do is recreate, here's the one uncut. I want to recreate this type of idea, this pattern, with this sweep at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of pattern material, which is just quarter inch MDF. And I'm going to slide it under the secondary drawing. And I would just go ahead and perforate through once I establish this line properly. And I'd perforate and make that entire pattern. And then once I get all the perforations coming through, I could even mark the location of the tenons and the mortise and then slide it out. And then 
noting where all those perforations are using straight edges and curved bending sticks, recreate the curves, and I would have a near identical drawing as what's on here on my pattern. I would bandsaw it out and refine and smooth the surfaces, and we'd have it. So that would give us our final thing. But let's check it out one more time. My main thing for showing you that is the way to develop a design and to derive a design. So using mock-ups like we did for the Adirondack, or you could use the same for here, you can, you can change things, you know? And using, using chairs that you already own or that are in, outside in neighbor's yards that you can measure when they're not home or outside at the Shaker Village, you know, the public settings, and you sit in a bench or a seat, I can't tell you how many times I've sat down or, or taken notice of something and actually gotten some measurements. They say, wow, this is a comfortable seat. Take a look at it, you know, and see how it really is. It's definitely too heavy. I'm going to trim it down so that that back leg, I think I'm going to take some off the back here, like probably right in here, so that it gets thinner and I can make this transition. Because that back rail is actually quite in, I could take a, quite a bit off that back inside. So where this leg sweeps back, it's going to look more in agreement with the front leg, but it won't be quite that, that thin. But this is really why I like to draw on a piece of plywood or MDF, because if your baseline at the edge of the drawing is thought of as the floor, you can just stand it up like this and get a pretty good two-dimensional representation of that piece and make little changes. If you're really not sure, sometimes you actually have to make a model to see it. But we already know what we've got here, and we've made other dining chairs. We like that sweep back. But I am going to refine and change that a little bit. That's a little bit <coughs> too chunky <coughs> down there, and it doesn't have to be. Another thing you could tweak, and when I used the outdoor swing, was I, I just used a straight line under here. And I kept a straight line under the seat rail. But it wouldn't be awful if you actually... You might have to change, no, you wouldn't have to change the joinery because I have this offset a little bit. But you could sweep, you could add a little bit of curvature to the bottom edge of that so it would mimic if you wanted to. And you could also, see how straight that is? You could come like this, come back a little bit so you leave it flat. And I would come up a little bit like that. And then once I get high enough, now I'm going to try to parallel this sweeping curve a little bit. So I'd come in here, and I'd come down. And then, so I'd take away the flatness of this thing. I can't see it because I'm so close to it right here. I will stand back. And then you could bring it back up. Something like this. And then I could come back down like that. So we'd be changing this whole profile. It would look more like a sculptural arm than a dead flat line. You see that? You could play around with it like that. Normally I wouldn't come back up like that, but you could, you could have it come down like this and actually just rise up a little bit like that. That could be the other way to do it. You've got, you see, it would be similar to the arm. And then this could be rounded over more. So a full round over. You could even carve a little volute on that side if you wanted to. That would be going a little too far, though. So some of that profile, that's up to you. You know, you could play around with it and use this side view to refine or change the lines if you wanted to.